Well, hello everyone. My name is Zachary Ruscha, and this is Box of Teeth. I think it's time we start with another horror-themed antagonist that you can use for a Dungeons and Dragons game right now. When you're running a role-playing campaign, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or something else, one of the most important elements that you want to have there for your players are memorable villains or antagonists, whatever you want to call them. Yes, there's going to be monsters of the week mid bosses and the like but having those memorable big bads really helps reinforce the story's themes brings out your world a little bit more gives it some flesh it really helps encourage kind of emergent play as your players now have feelings towards those specific antagonists we've covered a couple of horror themed antagonists previously that you can use for a dungeons and dragons game we're going to start with a new one today and then cover her minions in subsequent episodes and the like and that would be the vespidae the vespidae is a combination of the fly and the wasp woman from classic black and white movies but there's also of course the jeff goldblum fantastic fly movie she covers a couple of different horror subgenres, mostly scientific horror and some body horror with a little tiny mix of cosmic slash planar horror in there as well. So let's just dive right into her. Caught between Wasp and Woman, the Vespidae is a mechanical chimera that is powered by an admixture of electricity and fury. This silvery gynoid's legs are mostly human in shape, though they end in very pointed toes and are lined with self-regenerating barbs of lodestone. A slim, wasp-like thorax extends from her tailbone that is ringed with red circles. Two sets of arms are sported on her shapely torso. There's a humanoid set, again, that is silvery and mechanical from her flanks, and insectile ones that come from her shoulder joints. Her head is human-shaped for the most part, although there are mandibles that are cutting from the side of her lips and small compound eyes that are in the sockets of the mask that she wears. Her antennae are merely a tuning fork and her wings an exquisite collection of silver and conductive gossamer. She has red glass between her ribs, on her cheeks, down along her spine, and through this glass one can glimpse the lumpy combination of exposed muscle and chitin that is floating within the charged chemicals, which is her actual body. As one might expect, Vespa and I never wanted to be a mechanical abomination. She and her lover were accomplished alchemists and arcanists that had a keen interest in insects as a hobby. They kept a variety of bees, hornets, and wasps around their estate to both study and cultivate for various agricultural pursuits, but again, only as a hobby. Their real focus remained on inventing what they called waystones. They wanted to make these arcane devices that would open up teleportation to the masses instead of it taking years of arcane study to master the spell. Years, incidentally, that were under the thumb of the very powerful and greedy planar guild that essentially enslaved the wizards that were under their service. The guild's wizards kept the secrets of teleportation magic to themselves and charged exorbitant prices to make sure that people had access to them. Thus, they only really catered to the rich and powerful, which made them rich and powerful as well, effectively making the planar guilds just another group of oligarchs. The lovers dreamed of crippling the planar's guild and becoming heroines to the common folk. Unfortunately, one of their experiments ended in a nightmare. One cannot say if a stray hornet just flew into the Waystone experiment, or if there was sabotage by the guild, or it was just a cruel twist of fate that messed the poor Vespidae up. She went into the Waystone as a woman, and on the other side appeared as a rapidly devolving mess of raw nerves, twisted bones, chitin, and oozing flesh. If not for her lover's quick thinking, she probably would have died that day. Perhaps it would have been for the best, one can hardly say. She spent the next couple of months in a vat of electrified goo to stay alive while her lover constructed this body she now wears and does great evil with. But why does she do great evil? Well, this whole ordeal drained all of the couple's finances, broke her lover's health and spirit, and now the Vespidae wants nothing more to get revenge on the Planer's Guild whether they're responsible for the accident or not. And pity anyone that gets in her way, they're all just pawns and fodder and collateral damage for her righteous crusade. All right, let's take a look into the Vespidae statistics for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. 
The Vespidae is a challenge rating 12 medium monstrosity who is neutral evil. She has a high armor class, a decent number of hit points, some saving throw bonuses, some skills. She is resistant to weapon damage that is not magical or adamantine. She does have damage immunity to lightning and poison. She also is immune to the exhaustion, petrified, and poison conditions. She knows some languages and she has dark vision. Ability-wise, she has Arcing Fury, so creatures around her have to succeed on a save or they take lightning damage every turn they're around her. She can turn this off and on as a bonus action. She also has Innate Spellcasting, perhaps Night Surprising. She can cast Lightning Lure and Lightning Bolt. Attack-wise, she does have Multi-Attack for two Scything Arm Attacks and one Bite Attack. The Scything Arms do a decent amount of slashing damage and a little bit of lightning damage. The Bite is no slouch when it comes to damage either, though it is piercing damage instead. It can also inflict Paralyzation with a repeated save. She also has a Conductive Stinger, which is not a Multi-Attack. It does a tiny bit of piercing damage, but its big issue is you have to make a Constitution save or you become Poisoned and vulnerable to lightning damage, which is the majority of what she does. This also has a repeated save. And what would a big bad be without some legendary actions? She has Scythe, so she makes a Scything Arm attack. She has Electrical Mayhem, so she can cast a spell. But she also has Voltaic Pull, so she makes a line of barbs. Remember, they are a lodestone that pulls things to them if they don't make a strength save as long as they're not flying. She also has Galvanic Vortex, so she charges herself and pulls people to her. That way, she can slice them up all the better. I hope you enjoyed this new horror antagonist we're going to be covering along with her minion, the Vespidae. You can find her all those minions, and hundreds more horror-themed monsters, all for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. They're all perfectly free at boxofteeth.blogspot.com. If you're more interested in the non-Dungeons & Dragons role-playing content that I have, or the horror fiction that I write that includes Grace Paint right here, it's got a killer clown. It's the first in its series. Book 2 is going to be out here by the end of summer, so stay tuned. You can always go to www.zacharyoshea.com. As always, I thank you for your time and your attention. And have a wonderful rest of the day. Also, I know there's bees and wasps out there. Don't get stung.